Amputated. At first, I couldn't believe my leg was gone. A guy like me, who was always so active and always involved in sports, who spent so much of his time playing tennis or bowling when it was too cold for tennis. And when hunting, I could cover more rough country than any of them. I can't believe that at my age, I'll never be able to do most of these things again. All the day after I found out about my leg, I nearly went crazy thinking about what I'd have to give up. And that's typical of the way I've always been, let's face it. All I've had on my mind was myself. And then something happened to make me forget about me and my leg. I forgot because I found out why Jim wasn't in the other bed. He was still in the operating room. Lori, my wife, told me they don't expect Jim to live. If Jim dies, it's my fault. If he dies, I killed him. I can't even remember when I didn't know Jim. I've got to admit that Jim was the steadier of the two of us. He got married first, after he'd also been first in getting a good job. They used to say you could tell the difference between us by the way we drove cars. Jim was smoother behind the wheel. I always felt I was a burn driver. I'd never had any real trouble, and that was my trouble. Maybe I'd have gotten wise if I hadn't always been able to skin through. But I got away with some pretty bad habits, even when Laurie was with me. Like going too fast in the wrong places. For instance, a neighborhood street where Jim used to say, kids can appear from behind parked cars like magic. First bad habit of all was thinking I was always as good a driver as I was sometimes. Like when I was too tired and ought to get off the road. I don't know how many times, especially on hunting trips, I was just plain lucky. Same thing when I'd had a few drinks. Again, I got away with it. Too many times, after a party or some celebration or other, I drove. And there must have been an angel on my shoulder. Until that one night, when the angel wasn't there. The night I took the road that always leads to trouble. Highball Highway. As Tom's attorney, I filled him in on the legal end of it. About the tests and the analysis for checking out the alcohol in your blood when you're involved with drunk driving. Every skill, including the ability to drive, diminishes in proportion to alcohol consumption. With only 0.05%, that's about two or three drinks, you're not the driver you ought to be. As the blood alcohol increases, you become more under the influence until everyone is affected at a level of 0.10%. In a lot of critical driving situations when normal reaction time is hardly enough, a few drinks can kill you. What's worse, your drinks can kill other people. Other people. I know there's nothing to it, but as long as that bed is empty, I feel the gym will come back. If they put somebody else in it. Anyway, I didn't know anything about alcohol in your blood the other night. Four of us, Fred, Harley, Jim, and myself, had been bowling the usual for Thursday night. Say, how about stopping by the hideaway? 
No, I really shouldn't, fellas. Jim was the only one who really wanted to get home. Uh, what do we he had an important for? sales meeting early the next day. He gave in without too much argument. much use wishing we'd gone home earlier, except somehow or other we had more to drink than we intended. It didn't seem very long until it was closing time, and by that time, it was too late, in more ways than one. By the time I got out on the road, Jim had the feeling we should have gone with the others in the cab. And I was beginning to feel the same way. But I wanted to get home, and I wanted to get Jim home. We haven't been home yet. Maybe Jim never will. I don't really know what happened. I got around a car at an intersection, and... <laughs> To avoid the other car, I skidded, lost control, and turned over. In a hospital bed in the middle of the night, nothing seems right. Nothing seems real. But this is real enough. If Jim goes, what about Margie, his wife? His widow. What about his children? What can I do? He's got to be still alive. friend of yours here. He's over the worst of it. He's going to be all right. Thank God. They say Tom will be able to drive again. Lots of people drive with artificial legs. And when he does, he'll have a better reminder than most of us. No matter how good a driver you are, there are times when you can't drive. When you're asleep. Probably even when you're angry or upset. And certainly after you've had the few too many that can maim or kill you. Or maybe what's worse, the few too many that can maim or kill other people. Tom can't go back and make it right. The only person who can do that is you, the driver, to whom as yet nothing like this has ever happened.
The unfortunate driver we've just seen could have been any one of us, even if we never drink. Drinking before you get behind the wheel is simply another bad driving habit. And any bad driving habit can get you into trouble. According to the experts in such matters, the first senses affected by alcohol are our sense of judgment and our sense of right and wrong. That um, other you after a few drinks may be personable and thoroughly charming, but that other you can't drive safely. Those same few drinks that bring out the best in your personality can only accentuate your worst driving habits. So stay out of trouble. If you drink, don't drive. And if you drive, don't drink.